Hi, I'm Rick Sellens. I'd like to talk a little bit about this heat transfer lab that we're going to do. But before I can talk about that, we need to go through some of the electronics background for the applications. Our main objective here is to understand how to better dissipate heat in power electronics, which you're going to use for lots of practical mechatronics projects. So we're going to look at some mechatronics code, like this segment over here, and we'll also look at our heat transfer circuit here that we're using. And before we do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the components that go into that circuit down here. And the one we'll be using is this regulator over here. But another way to manage the same sort of circuit is with a switching MOSFET, uh, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor that you can use to switch the power on and off. So let's concentrate for the moment on the circuit down here. This component here is a regulator. This component over here is a metal oxide semiconductor field effect trans transistor, MOSFET. And you can see that they both look very much the same. They're in the same kind of package, but they do two very different things. If we were trying to supply our load, some kind of a load that we're needing some, some electrical current uh, to, to operate, we have two approaches we could take. One, we could reduce the voltage to whatever voltage we need, like this 5 volt level that we're going to use across this load from whatever we start with, maybe as much as 24 volts DC supply. And the regulator allows us to do this. It's basically a simple circuit, standalone, does nothing, uh, needs no other uh, inputs, and it will take whatever DC input you give it and reduce it down to a specified voltage. This one's a 7805, which means that it reduces the voltage to 5 volts from this 24 volt DC input. The way it does that is essentially by just putting a big resistance uh, across there to bring that voltage down and dissipate the excess power. The result is that if we wanted 100 milliamps of current to flow through this circuit, then we would wind up uh, needing to dissipate about 1.9 watts of energy up here in the regulator, and we're only generating uh, about 0.5 watts of useful work here in the actual load. So the result is an efficiency down around 26%, which is terrible if we care about the efficiency. <clears throat> Why would we ever use a regulator? We use a, regulators a lot because they're simple and we use them in applications where we're going to reduce the voltage, usually not by quite as much as this, and we only need a small amount of current, like this 100 milliamps. So yes, we are throwing away 1.9 watts of energy. That's not such a huge amount of energy, particularly if we're, uh, if we're only building a one-off prototype. Where will you find regulators? Just about everywhere that you need to stabilize the operating voltage for a device. So for example, on your microcontroller here, there will almost always be a 3.3 volt regulator that's going to take the USB voltage of 5 volts down to 3.3 volts. And it will have to dissipate a small amount of heat doing that. It'll suck up about uh, one third of the energy that was available in that 5 volt supply. And that's probably going to be okay. If you're talking about any significant amount of power, you're going to want to switch that power on and off more effectively. And that's where a switching transistor comes in. If we have 5 volts continuously across this load, we might be able to get the same behavior out of this load up here by applying 24 volts, but only applying it about a fifth of the time. With pulse width modulation, we can switch this load on and off very quickly. And for things like LED lights or resistive heating or uh, electric motors, we'll still get the same behavior from about one-fifth of 24 volts DC, about 5 volts, as we would from having it be a continuous 5 volt source. 
Problem is we need to spend a little bit more money on this transistor. We need to provide some kind of infrastructure out here that's going to give us a signal to switch that uh, transistor on and off. And then we need to make the connection through the load and then through the drain and source terminals of the transistor to switch it on and off. The advantage is that unlike the huge resistance up here and the power drain that's going to result, this transistor only has a resistance when it's switched on from the drain to the source of about 10 milli ohms. So really a very small resistance. The power it will dissipate, I squared R, is going to be about one watt if we have 10 amps of power flowing through it. So it'll dissipate less heat with a hundred times the amount of current flow. So this is a much more efficient device that allows us to make much more effective use of our DC power. It's got an efficiency of about 99.6% switching it on and off to adjust the power going into this load. This is the type of device you'd almost be always be using in your power electronics. However, for this device to do our heat transfer experiment and dissipate one watt, we would have to have our load dissipating something like uh, 100 watts. We'd have a large load, we'd have a large DC current, and it's easier for us to get the same effect from the same package, dissipate more heat from this regulator with a much smaller load. So that's what we're going to do in this experiment. It's a little artificial, but it's got a really important application over here in power electronics whenever you're trying to control motors, for example, or any other substantial DC load. We've taken one of these regulators and attached a thermistor to it with a rivet so that we can measure the temperature right here which is going to be very close to the temperature of the uh, metal body of this, uh, this thermistor package. Because we want to figure out how the temperature is changing as we dissipate some energy from it. If we're going to dissipate energy, it's going to have to be warmer than room temperature. Now we've got a, uh, a regulator like this in the circuit over here. This one's bolted onto the back. There's also another thermistor here glued onto the front of the package just so we can compare the two results. And we've hooked up exactly the same circuit, although it may not be obvious just looking down at the board. We've got a DC supply coming in here. Right now it's running at 3.3 uh, volts, but we can turn that up to a higher voltage. And so now we've got about 24 volts DC. We should be able to see the temperature here on this device uh, and we'll measure that with our uh, Arduino sketch running on this microcontroller. I'll clear the output and if we watch it as we go along we're seeing the asterisks over here represent the extent to which we've risen above room temperature. So. 32, 34, 36, 35 or 36 degrees Celsius. Those are the temperatures being read by those two different thermistors. And we can see that this is heating up quite uh, well, either quickly from a thermal engineering standpoint or very slowly from our point of view, but we'll watch it as it goes along. There's our DC supply. It's feeding power in here, which is going over to the regulator like that. The regulator is also connected to ground potential and the output from that regulator is going to be 5 volts. It's being funneled over here to these three resistors. These are three 200 ohm resistors that are uh, providing a load and giving us a really pretty small amount of current. Uh, through our, our overall circuit. And yet we see our uh, regulator here is getting quite warm. It's up over 50 degrees Celsius now and still rising. In addition to that regulator on this board, we've got a fan, which we can turn on and off with this button. 
the lights indicate that the fan is on even though you can't see the airflow moving across here I think I hope that fan is going to cool down our regulator so if we blow air across it we should see it cool down but first we're going to watch while the regulator gets up to whatever equilibrium temperature it's going to have just sitting here in the room air we've waited and eventually this uh, uh, regulator here got up to a temperature approaching 90 degrees Celsius we get different answers from our two different thermistors and uh, some of that's the difference in the temperature that they're actually experiencing and some of it's probably the quality of calibration but I think it's kind of remarkable just how close they are in terms of their readings. Now if we wanted that to be cooler, we'd have to enhance the heat transfer somehow. And one way we could do that is by adding some extra area to the system. I'm just going to clip that bulldog clip on there and let's see what happens. With a little luck there'll be some heat transfer into the bulldog clip and that'll cool down the regulator. I've sped up the video but the measurements are still happening at the same rate. It's happening slowly, but it is having an effect. Likewise, I expect that if I turn on the fan, I'll get even more cooling. We can improve the effectiveness of that fan by adding a little duct over top of it to make sure that all of the air is going in the direction towards the regulator. If we wanted to be even more effective, we could make sure that the air that was coming out through this section over here, that's really not doing any good to cool off the regulator, is going to uh, come out just right here around the regulator at a higher velocity. So that'll increase our Reynolds number and increase our heat transfer coefficient. I've got this little shroud here that's got a cutout in it that's about the shape of the components down on the board. So I'm going to put that on and that'll allow me to direct the airflow right just over the regulator. Okay, so now if you look at the end here, you can see that the, uh, the fan air is being fed out basically just over the region where the regulator is. So I've got multiple different ways of cooling this device. And what you're going to be doing in the lab is trying to figure out which ways are most effective and whether or not they're additive. For instance, does having enhanced area and enhanced airflow at the same time produce even better cooling? Because your objective is to make sure that this regulator or whatever other power components you've got stays cool enough that it keeps on functioning even when uh, the power demand goes up or the ambient temperature goes up. And you'd like to succeed at that with as simple an installation as possible. In this case, we've already got our temperature down from over 90 to under 50. And eventually it will drop to 40. That's going to give us huge increases in reliability in both the long term and the short term.